Hello. We are here again in the Palagio. Let's hope today is less scuffed than yesterday. I apologize. There was so many like technical difficulties I had to work through, but thank you for being patient with me. I appreciate you, all of you, for being so helpful. And so understanding. Especially you, you all who are in Discord. Shout out to my friends in Discord. My followers, my community, because you guys are top-notch, A-tier, the best community that I've got. So thank you for that. Thank you for being that for me. All right. Ooh. Should we go here? Spring Garden again? Or, oh, this is circled. The deep hole. Let's go to the deep hole. <clears throat> Look at all these tang! Yellow tangs are so pretty. And super vibrant. Like, they're beautiful creatures. I want one, but they're very, very hard to import. Because of recently... And when I say recently, I mean the past few years. They've changed um, tropical fish import laws. So it makes it a lot harder to get some fish that used to not be difficult to get. <clears throat> My darling Oceana, I can only pray that she is safe. If you run into something dangerous, the pulsar is your only hope. Would you like me to explain how the pulsar use? Yeah? Because I feel like something's gonna happen. That's scary. First, equip the pulsar from your tools menu. Okay. This is like a, a gun. This... <laughs> We don't have time for a full explanation, so I'll run you through the basics. Join the pulsar at your target, point the pulsar at your target, then press A to fire an electromagnetic pulse. This is essentially a taser. We are tasing these fish in the water, which conducts electricity even stronger. That's, that's wonderful. But give them the benefit of the doubt in extreme circumstances, fine. Fine. Okay. The indicator on the bottom right of the screen shows how much charge it has left. Take care because the energy runs out and you will temporarily be unable to fire. Ooh. And you'll have to stay clear of any dangerous animals until it recharges. The pulsar was originally designed to keep farmed fish in good health. It displays a targeting reticle over the animal's head that are injured or sick. Hmm. And you could use the pulsar to heal them. That sounds sketch but we'll go with it but for now just remember you can also use it when faced with an with a predator if you hit your target with a few pulses that should calm it that's all there is to it now please hurry that's all there is to it you're essentially stunning these animals into submission air gauge up yep 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 now off to the deep hole let's go hello big boy Napoleon fish. Humphead wrasse. All right. Oh, there's a cleaner wrasse. I love those things. I know I talked about it in EO1. These little cleaner wrasses. They're so cute and so friendly. And they will, if you put your like hands in your tank, if you have a tank, or come to them, they will come and try to clean you. It is really, really pretty funny. And ticklish, if you're ticklish. So just keep that in mind. I am going the right way. Okay. Some days I'm not sure. If, I, if I'm going the right way. Uh-oh. What's going on with my model? Boop. Ah. There we go. Fixed it. She's better. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, I see how the kelp could get very tanglesome. <laughs> could we do, could we say that? Tanglesome? Hmm. And I hear impending doom. I don't like this. <laughs> the impending doom is getting to me. Can you hear me? It's John Eric. How's it going? There should be some forest kelp in front of you. The corridor is the entrance to the deep hole. Tiger sharks have been sighted here further ahead. You can't be too careful. Keep on your guard. All right. 
and away we go. I can't wait to see all the marine life and kelp, aquaculture, not aquaculture, but um, flora and fauna in HD. Sailfin Tang, aka the Dust Jardini. Sailfin just refers to the long sail fins that are north and south of the animal, which multiple animals have. So it's more specifically called a Dust Jardini Tang. <clears throat> and an adult Emperor Angel. Is there a lake? Here we are. Hmm. See rays? Are those rays? <clears throat> oh, they are. Look how many. The Colosseum. Katama Occult. Till I know my. And you should. Maybe I should move my character. So you can actually see. <clears throat> Here we are. I can see when something pops up. The giant crater is at the center of a deep hole. Like I said, proceed with caution. Even the local divers don't come here. That's scary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I would imagine because these really, really long spiny tail rays can be very intimidating for divers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Japanese Eagle Ray. Wow. I feel like rays have gotten a really bad rap ever since the incident with Steve Irwin. Um, people mistake them for, like, killers. Like, scary killers, and they're really not. Um, as much as I love Steve Irwin and absolutely love the legacy him and his family have left, the negative media has made it to where they demonize this animal and in all actuality they're they're not harmful creatures they just can be very temperamental when other creatures animals mammals people are in their personal space so to speak or feel threatened and that animal more than likely felt threatened enough with my spiel let's see Ooh. Starks Demoiselle. Demoiselle? I feel like that's French. Very, it feels very French. <clears throat> oh, that one's just bigger. Okay, neat. Neat, neat. I feel like here it is. I was like, we're missing something. I know it's close. It has to be close. Ooh. There's the angry boy. Who I'm assuming we're going to have to tase. <clears throat> oh, she's stuck down there. I'm sure she's running out of air. You found Oceana? What's the situation? There's a tiger shark in the area. What are you saying? It, it suggests that the shark is hungry and aggressive? That's dicey. It looks like Oceana is playing it safe and hiding, but sharks have a keen sense of smell. It could be a notice her at any moment. Use the pulsar to calm that aggressive shark. Let's tase its ass. <laughs> Gonna shock it into submission. Damn, that's a big boy, too. Danger. Oh, oh, did I not get it? Okay. Okay, let's try again. Danger. Oh, is it following me? No, no, no. 
Looks like we are. I don't like this first person mode. Where is it? Did we make it submit? Or is it it's just too far away? Well done, you've calmed the shark. I dazed it, stunned it, and put it in its place. <laughs> the tiger shark swam off. Thank you so much, you saved my life. I'm really sorry for putting you in danger. Jean Eric is worried. Wait, before I leave, we've got to find the pendant. It's in here somewhere. Please, will you help me find it? It's at the very bottom of this crater, and, I, and I'm sure of it. I see something sparkly down there. You've earned a new title, Fearless Thrill Seeker. Ooh, I like that. If you use something out of the ordinary... Oh, yeah, examine it. Cool, cool. We're not newbies here. We know how to examine things. And when I see sparkles, I know where to go. <laughs> oh. The sky pendant. Interesting. <clears throat> oh, that's it. Thank you. The pulsar is amazing. I've heard that thing. I have used that thing for treating animals, but it looks like it can even be used to calm them out of uh, calm aggressive sharks too. If you have haven't come to my rescue. Who knows what might have happened. You would have ran out of air. That's what would likely happen. You can use the pulsar to cure injured or sick marine creatures. A colored reticle will appear over them when you have the pulsar equipped. <clears throat> okay. Green reticle means that they are lightly injured or slightly sick animals. Two shots with the pulsar will cure them. Yellow means that it's moderate injuries or illness. You'll need three shots to cure them. Purple means that this is a serious problem and you'll need four shots to cure the animal. Red reticle means a creature is in critical condition and you need at least five shots for this. Curing the aquatic life of an area helps to preserve the environment and you can even get rewarded for it. Ooh, okay. Oh, there's a green fish, so... Come on. Two. Did it work? How do I know it worked? Oh, I see! It's like attached to the animal. Huh. I don't see the pulsar monitor, though. That tells me if they're ill. Maybe I need to go closer? Go! <clears throat> oh! Running out of air. That was new. It's because it got attacked by the shark, right? Hmm. Diving level. That's interesting. <clears throat> okay. So we increase our diving level the longer we can be underwater. <clears throat> the deep hole, new location. What were you thinking, Oceana? Going off on your own like that to dive in the deep hole? Do you have any idea how worried I was? I I'm sorry, Grandpa. But if that shark hadn't been there, I would have been just fine. Have you forgotten everything that I've taught you? That kind of thinking can lead to disaster. That shark was one of many dangers that you could have encountered down there. You can't be so naive. Being unprepared only puts you at risk. You can only you can always count on you can't always count on luck and good fortune like you did today. Grandpa. I'm so sorry. I promise to be more careful and better prepared in the future. Very well. Thank you, Oceana. Let's return to the island for now. 
I can't thank you enough for what you did. I really owe you one. I'll leave the pulsar in your capable hands. If you you seem pretty handy with it. It takes a special individual to really master it, and I think you've got what it takes. <clears throat> well, we both have pendants now. It looks like it's missing a piece. Like there's probably a looped end. Like the one on the right, see how it has like a, a barrel end? I think that there's probably a third piece. <clears throat> They're both pretty much the same tube-like shape. What do you think? Can you see anything special? A cone and a cylinder? They're the same diameter. I mean, yeah, both? Yeah, they are. Now that you mention it, they look like they might fit together. You push the two pendants together, and they lock into place with an audible click. <clears throat> the pendants are engraved on the outside with small letters that form a verse. The road to the truth is the Song of Dragons. Ooh. The Song of Dragons. Is this a message from my dad? I think I've heard that phrase somewhere before. Why don't we get Nancy to appraise them when we get back to the island? You haven't met Nancy yet, have you? She's a traitor. She travels around these islands and she knows everything. You've earned a new title. Sea, South Sea Drifter. <clears throat> Nine Ball Island. Two mysterious pendants, Oceana's only keepsakes from her father. Was it he who engraved them with the road? The road to the truth is the Song of Dragons? The truth. What could that mean? And what does it have to do with the Song of Dragons? Hmm. Of course, with all of this actually since you arrived. I've had no chance to tell you about the place where you'll be based. Welcome to Nine Ball Island, the base of operations for LNL Diving Service. It's also the place that we call home. It has all the modern conveniences we need. Nice. Everything you need for your work is here at this table. And sorry about the mess, we love our soda and OJ here. The Marine Encyclopedia contains a record of all creatures you've seen. Stop by this camera to develop any photographs you take and this album to put all of your photographs into. Of course we have a radio so we can keep in touch with the outside world. Then there's this very important dive log where you can record your progress. Use the dive log on the table to save at Nine Ball Island. There's also a notebook with information on that you will have done so far, places you've been and other things. And last, but not least, we have the collection. It is a record of all the items and coins you've salvaged. Go to where you see the wetsuit on the wall, wall and change clothes and equipment. Oh my goodness. No. No. I feel like me getting hiccups either when I'm streaming or recording is going to become a meme. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Back to it. And head inside the cabin to rest for a while and advance time if you need to. I've got it. Thanks for the explanation. In any case, I'm sure you can find your way around here by yourself. By the way, you can display a list of shortcuts for all of the island's functions by pressing the plus button. Hey, Grandpa, you forgot to introduce someone. Oh, yeah, of course. I don't see anyone. Don't look so surprised. LNL Diving Service has another member you just haven't met yet. <gasps> ah, that's so cute! Yes! Short beaked common dolphin. It's so pretty. I think it likes us. It's so cute! It comes to visit us quite often, a few times a day. It also helps our work when it's the right mood. When it's in the right mood. Almost like a business partner. So I would suggest that you befriend it as soon as you can. Give it a name. I'm so bad at giving things names. Um, I'll name it Charlie. 
I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's a go-to for me, just Charles, Charlie. Charlie. Ah. Yeah, sure. Charlie. We love Charlie. <laughs> Don't we? We love Charlie. Yeah. <clears throat> the mighty protector. Look at the certificate to check out your titles. You can change your title at any time. Okay. That's pretty neat though. I like the title aspect. It's a dolphin bell. You can use to signal the dolphin. Go on, ring the bell and give the dolphin a call. Mm. New progress. New recruit. <clears throat> Should be easier to entertain and play with the dolphin. With this controller, at least. It's so cute. It's gonna do a spin. Where is it? Whee! Aw, corn. A little over four feet. <clears throat> Where are you, Charlie? Oh, there you are. I learned a new trick. Good, Charlie. Ooh. Thing. Oh, yeah. This controller is much easier. <laughs> Especially with the classic controller. <clears throat> oh, it's so happy. I would love to see one of these dolphins uh, sometime in my life. I think I told you guys about my childhood dolphin. Um, why is my model being done? My childhood dolphin story. I know you can see my face. Right here. <sighs> Hello. I wonder how long it's been like that. Go, Charlie, go! Go, Charlie, go! <laughs> it's singing. It's so cute. Oh, oh, new trick? New trick? Did we learn something? It wants a reward. How can we give it a reward? Can you reward it? I saw a bucket over here. It seems you're natural with dolphins. Ah, uh, yes. Wait here a minute, both of you. <clears throat> it wants a treat. The sea whistle I received a while ago from an acquaintance a long time ago. It can produce sounds of varying pitches. It is not very widely used apart from aquariums in, this, in some countries and by dolphin trainers who put shows on for visiting customers. Oh, we can do signaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think we, we've explained all there is to know about Nine Ball Island. Cool, cool. I want to give the dolphin a treat. Walking on land. Is it the same as like... Yeah, it's the same as diving. You just kind of... This little girl is in the way. Use the radio to call Nancy. We can't give our dolphin a... Okay. Okay, well... Poor Charlie doesn't get a treat for all his hard work. <clears throat> There we go. <laughs> yes, table. Things on the table. Call Nancy? Absolutely. Let's talk to Nancy. <clears throat> 
Got it. I'm on my way. Ah, here she is. She's wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> I did not expect that. Howdy, Jean Eric. Hello, Nancy. You didn't waste a minute getting here. So this is your new recruit, huh? It's some real pleasure meeting you. I'm Nancy Young, the number one trader in the Palagio Commonwealth. If you need anything, anything at all, just give me a call. And I do mean anything. Hovercrafts, corn dogs, kittens, chowder, you name it, and I'll get it. Well, I'll try to anyway. Hey, Nancy, could you take a look at something for us? Sure, what is it? This is made out of lapis lazuli, isn't it? It's similar to the tradi traditional charms you see in East Asian countries. Uh, but it, this specific style of carving isn't associated with those cultures at all. So it was made by a different culture. Yes, it was. It was also extremely old. Oh, but look at this engraving. The road to truth is the Song of Dragons. It is written in English, which is odd enough, but it, it seems to have been carved relatively recently as well. Yes, I think that my son Matthias might have inscribed it when he was still alive. But that, but what could that mean? I'm sure I would have heard it somewhere before. The road to the truth is the Song of Dragons. The Cyclades suffer under the Shroud of Poseidon's curse. As the waves crash and the battle rises, Balka Castle shall sink before your eyes. What on earth is that? It's from a mystical epic written by the 19th century Turkish poet. This verse talks about the sinking of Vaka Castle. Uh, yes, of course, I have heard it before. The legend says that Valka Castle still lies somewhere in the Aegean Sea. The castle is said to have sunk to the bottom of the sea overnight where it still remains undiscovered to the very day, along with all of its treasures. So, if Dad did leave us this message, is he telling us to find Valka Castle? Ooh, a good mystery and treasure, I like that. Oh, you want to know more about Matthias? He was exceedingly smart, much like you. He studied oceanography very intently. He died 15 years ago in an accident while exploring the sea depths. What? You want to go to Valka Castle? And so do I. Dad wanted to tell us something, and that something has to do with Valka Castle. Well, I could be lying if I said I had no interest myself, and a visit to the Aegean Sea would certainly be beneficial for the business. All right, it's settled. Let's pack up and head for the Aegean Sea. In that case, I'm sure you'll need some new diving equipment. And because you're in such good customers, I'll waive the appraisal fee for those pendants. How nice of her. Trader Nancy. Call Nancy when you want to buy new items or have items you've salvaged appraised. You can divide everything I sell into three basic categories. You have equipment, which contains stuff like wetsuits, gloves, fins, and all that. Then there's Island and Reef, where you can pick up items, liven up the Nine Ball Island, or build an awesome private reef. And finally, you have Other, for those things that you just don't think that fit everywhere else. All right, stop blabbering, and now you can get on shopping. Yeehaw! Don't, <laughs> don't judge me, that is the best accent I've got. The best one, that's it. <laughs> Where is this money coming from? Build a reef, that sounds like a lot of fun. I have a reef in my house, in my aquarium. Ooh, barnacles, are these barnacles? Reef tires. Hmm, okay. Interesting, what about other? Well, don't need anything now. Thank you, though. <clears throat> By the way, do you remember that equipment you asked to get me? Uh, what equip- Oh, right. 
You wanted an underwater camera and some night diving gear, right? You forgot, didn't you? Ugh, I thought you might. Me? Forget? Never. Look, I have the right here. <laughs> Oops. Camera. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this a really old camera? Maybe older than I. Well, I, uh, you see? Okay, about this. I'll give you a special discount on it. How does that sound? Oh, and the night diving gear will take a bit more time, so uh, please be patient. It sounds like we have no choice. I guess we'll wait. <clears throat> Here, you can look after the camera. I'm sure you'll have plenty of use for it in your work. Oh yeah, feel free to use the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Just stop by the gate. Yeah, let's go ahead and use this Wi-Fi connection that got shut down how many years ago? It's okay. But it's cool that it actually was implemented, you know, that you could play with other people. <clears throat> All the new things. Yep, they already told me about this. I just want to... Oh, that's, it doesn't work that way, does it? Help me, odd fish. Okay. Are these the ones I've completed? I think maybe ones that I've started, because I don't think I've found all the coins for sure. I think I found like one, maybe two. Oops, is this the southern lady? Yeah. Well, I'd like to maybe dive? Huh. Maybe we have to sleep or something. Past time in some way. <clears throat> until noon? Sure. Sleep until noon tomorrow. Sounds good to me. you'll let us start the quest Balka castle in the Cicero Strait it's like chasing a legend well it could be thought of as a research to help the business uh, when you're ready to depart point to the boat oh I'm ready oops did not want to talk to you again my bad all right let's go to the boat and depart Okay, let's make the world our oyster. You know, we're not talking about the boat the whole way, right? We'd never get there. We're going to head the to, to the Palagio's main island, then take a flight. Just select the Cicero Strait on the Aegean Sea from the world map. Oh, and don't forget, it'll take us one whole day to get there by plane. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, wow. Cicero straight. Yeah, no, it would definitely take a whole day to get there. No kidding. Hmm. Shark infested? Oh boy. Oh boy. <clears throat> this is literally a world traveling, which is pretty cool. This area is called the Cicero Strait. It is known for its reefs, and it is said to be the resting place of Valka Castle. Why did my dad send us here? I cannot begin to guess. I cannot... Well, if we can find Valka Castle, we should discover something. How are we going to search for it? Using a grid pattern or something? 
I have something in mind for that. I recently revisited a friend in Italy and an old diving contact of mine. I was able to get my hands on something very useful. Ahoy! What was that? What are you doing there? You scared me half to death. Well, well, it must be a boatload of new customers. Mind if I come aboard? His, I love his diving gear. It looks so cool. It's sure nice to see you out of the water for a bit. Nice dinghy. Nice dinghy you've got here. Yeah, that's what that says. Nice dinghy. You guys have a bubble tea or energy drinks? Ugh, this is thirsty work. I need a bubble tea. I am about this life. This man is speaking my language. Uh, we have water and orange juice and soda. Who are you anyway? Don't you recognize me? I'm Gaston Gray. But you can call me Gigi. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Gigi, I've heard that name. You're that famous American salvager. Right, you are. I've been here for the past few months in pursuit of a gold, gold, old dream. I'm searching for treasure from the legendary Volca Castle. What? Really? That's why we're here too. Seriously? The waters around here aren't for beginners, you know. The area's been notorious for shipwrecks since the days of ancient Greeks. They are relentless giant whirlpools, reefs crawling with sharks, and not to mention the infamous shark who pretty much owns this place. The giant man-eating Thanatos. Oh. Ever heard of him? This is his territory. He'll swallow you up in one bite. My point is, it seems pretty likely who's going to find the castle first and claim all of that treasure. The world famous salvager Gigi, of course. Eh, yeah, let us know what you find, sir. Hmm. What? What are you saying? We're pro divers. Let's show this windbag what that LNL diving service can do. You can't talk. You can talk all you like, but there is no way that you're better than me. You don't believe me? Fine. Are you willing to bet which one of us will find Valka Castle first? Oh, you're on. If you find it before me, I'll scrub your boat with my toothbrush. And don't cry. I'll find it first. See you around. Ooh, he's cocky. A typical American, eh? Mm. <laughs> That guy was annoying and rude too. Sweet wetsuit though. Well, so much for taking our time on this mission. Grandpa, you were in the middle of saying something. What was it? Oh yeah, let's have a look at this. A multi-sensor. This is the latest electromagnetic multi-scanning device. That multi-sensing se the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> It's a multi-sensor for short. It's used for searching things underwater. It should help us find what we're looking for, and so much more efficiently. Awesome! We'll find Valka Castle, and in no time with this. Unfortunately, it only has a range of about 100 feet. I need to find some clues about the castle's whereabouts first. Just to think about it, no one has ever really found this place. Valka Castle isn't going to be just lying around somewhere in the seafloor. But an entire castle, it just can't be that hard to find. As usual, I'll leave the gadgets to you. From how you've handled the pulsar, I'm sure you'll have no trouble with this. When you're ready, start your dive, and uh, I'll show you how to use your multi-sensor. Alright, let's go! Let's go! Woo! That was funny. <laughs> I feel like I barely made progress in the other map. And now we're on a new map. So many maps. Oh, some Marlin? I can't tell from below. So there's a lot of fish. Oh, I'm trying to see. Not much coral. Fish that are somewhat already identified, but there are a lot of fish. Is that what that means? These unusually shaped reefs are home to many large sharks, including hammerheads, 
and the chance to see these animals that makes it very popular for a diving spot. Are those sharks that are above us? I thought they look more like marlin, but I could be wrong. Cicero Strait in the Aegean Sea. Can you hear me? It's Jean Eric. The multi sensor is used to find objects buried in the seabed. The ship's sonar indicates that it is too deep to use it. There should be an opening between the rocks right in front of you. Try moving over there first. Line sturgeon fish. When you focus on it, focus on a creature you've never seen before. It's entry. Yeah, we've noticed that. Thanks. Ooh, I see sharks. A lot of different ones. Some brain coral. The North Canyon. Ooh. This area should do nicely. Wait, there are a lot of sharks? Don't be scared, they are just hammerhead sharks. They can be a little unpredictable, but those are almost re no reports of attacks. As long as you don't startle them, you should have nothing to worry about. Go ahead and equip the multi-sensor. Ooh, interesting. The multi-sensor works similarly to the organs in the head of a hammerhead shark. It is known as an ampulla of Lorenzini, which help them find their prey. When you have it equipped, it will send out a signal of electromagnetic magnetic waves that detect any unusual objects buried within the seabed. It also analyzes the material the object is made of, and as for one more of these types, stone, metal, wood, or high density. Ooh. Multisensor has picked up something. The material appears to be stone and have high density. Okay. It is not detecting any metal or wood here. Pretty amazing technology, huh? It's made of lapis lazuli too. Indeed it was. I wonder if there's some connection. From what I can see, the ship's sonar, there's a similar shallow region in the southwest. Why don't you search with your multi-sensor? Hmm. <laughs> but we might need the pulsar too. Can you hear me? It's Jean Eric. That big shark is a hammerhead. You can see that its T-shaped head looks a bit like a hammer. Duh. These sharks are very popular with divers. When looking up from underneath, the hammerhead silhouette can look quite surreal. It truly feels like you have entered another world. Scalloped hammerhead. Nice. Very nice. Looks like there's quite a lot of them, too. Ooh, some moon jellies! I love moon jellies. Swallowtail sea perch. Awesome. These are the moon jellies. They're so pretty. They remind me, like, the tip of their... Um, umbrella reminds me a lot of like a sand dollar, how a sand dollar looks. And it's so pretty. Okay, let's see if we can use the new item now. All right, you're in the right place. Use the multi sensor to search there. Multi sensor. Oh. The multi sensor is picking up something but we're blocked by a whirlpool. This whirlpool must be one of the infamous Ciceros Andines. This area is known for these whirlpools. Sailors have feared them for generations. You'll have to try to get out and around it somehow. The map shows a rock. Face your right and go towards the back around it, and then left, and you should be able to get through. 
If you get confused, use the X and check your map. Danger, turn back. Well, I thought... Oh, like completely around it. Okay. I see. I see. Ooh. They weren't kidding. Infamous for many ancient shipwrecks. Look at all the barnacles that are on it. Wreck of pirate... Wreck of the Pirate of Athens. Very ancient. Wow. Gobies? Golden eye rockfish. Those are interesting. Real rockfish look a, a bit different. They're more plump and round and very, very deadly. <laughs> Step on one, you're in for a world of hurt. Oh, more perch. Oh, here are the marlin. I thought I saw some. I wonder if there's anything around here. Ooh. Sturgeon fish. Yeah, green sturgeon. They're very easy to identify by the shape of their head and the, like, spines on their back. Most any time you see something shaped like this with whiskers and those spines, it's a sturgeon fish. Some variant of a sturgeon fish. European parrotfish. Oh, those are pretty. An Indo-Pacific sailfish. It has such a big, beautiful dorsal fin. It's totally unique. They fold up their dorsal fins when they're swimming to reduce the water resistance. Fortunately, we don't get to see them very often. I think sailfish are super cool, don't you? They are really pretty. Oop, wrong way. I do want to check out this... Ooh, wreck. There's got to be something in here, yeah? More moon jellies. Getting close. Ooh, here we are. Are those mahi mahi? I didn't, maybe? I didn't know mahi-mahi were in this region. But it looks very similar. Mahi-mahi! Very cool. I want to see what this shark is, just to get it in my encyclopedia. Because I'm all for filling up the Pokedex. <laughs> White tip reef shark. Actually, I think this is close to where we're supposed to be. We're on the opposite end. Let's scan with the multi-sensor. No? Oh, we're way off. This is another Undine. Just kidding. Let's go back. <laughs> I see the cove, though, that we're supposed to be in. I got distracted by all of the, the neat things that we can find here. I feel like that's going to be a consistency in Luminous as well. We're going to be looking for something specific, but getting sidetracked because there's so many other... Ooh, like that. The ADHD is uh, on fleek today. <laughs> Ooh, shiny. <gasps> is it? It's a goby and a pistol shrimp. It's a, yep, Singapore prawn goby. And here's the prawn likely a pistol shrimp goby shrimp usually they pair like this and they're called pistol shrimp I've never heard them called specifically a goby shrimp interesting is it more of the same ooh treasure toucan coin and some damsels come here I don't think so it is a damsel gold tailed damsel Dems well. <laughs> and one more to check out before we go to where we're supposed to be going. Oh, more of the same. Okay. Now let's head back this way. I like that you can actually swim with the map um, being semi-transparent. 
so then you can see where you're going. It's actually a really nice touch instead of having to open and close and open and close like I did in EO1. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's. T Ooh, wait. Just kidding. Found something here. Oh, another coin. And some juvenile clown triggers. They're so cute. So cute, so small. Okay, we're getting close. Very close. I think I see what we're supposed to be finding as well. A lapis lazuli lump, AKA sapphire. It looks like you found something. What is it? Another piece of lapis lazuli? There seems to be quite a lot down here. In fact, there's too much to be occurring naturally. Perhaps a ship carrying a load of these stones sank here and they spilled out. Hold on a second. I have some records here that might have that information. Ah, okay. Yes, it seems like it's called Arctos. It went down near here. She sank nearly in the 20th century and her wreck is still down. She was a traitor running between Egypt and Greece. You know, Egypt was been, has been famous for its lapis lazuli crafts for centuries. The wreck of the Arctos is somewhere on E4 on your map. It might be worth searching there. Now that you know the rough topography of this area, you can dive right here for the next time. Let's go back up. I feel like this is a good stopping point for episode two. But I definitely want to check out E4 to find more um, wreckage from the Arctos. Making notes. Found a lot of cool stuff already. Yes, save in our log. Oh, this is really peaceful. Well, everyone. What do you think so far? Episode 2? Are you excited to see what we find in the Arctos? Because I want to know. I'm curious if it's going to be more lapis lazuli, aka sapphire, or if we're going to find some more ancient Greek coins. I think both would be really cool, but I'm curious to see what exactly we may find that's abnormal than what we think we'll find there. Until next time, though, I'll see you on episode three after this of Blue World. Take care, guys. Enjoy, and I will see you next time.